So in this video, we're going to start off by looking at the basic master pattern ideas for a pair of trousers. So that's why we need the back of the half scale pattern and the front of the half scale pattern. So that's the front and that's the back. What I've done with these is I've copied them onto this paper here. And what we have here is the front bag, and we'll discuss these lines later. And then I've got the back leg as well. And it only goes up to where the printout finishes. I haven't got the rest of the leg. What we're going to be concentrating on is the slanted pocket, the fly, and the back pocket. Some of you have already done this, so this is a bit of a recap. Um, again, the square paper isn't necessary if you don't have it, but it will just help us understand the scale. When we look at the front block, we've got the grain line, we've got the crutch or the fly notch there, and then this line here represents the centre front. And then on the back, we have the centre back. This U shape here is often known as the rise. Like the sun rises in the sky. And obviously the rise at the back is deeper to allow for the bum. And if you ever have problems with trouser fitting, it can be because the rise at the back is too tight. And then that's why you get a wedgie. The back has two notches because that's just pattern cutting code for front and back. One for the front, two for the back. And then here we have a dart and that dart is about midway through. Side seams with a curve for the hip. Now one thing that we haven't got on here yet, apart from there's a very faint grain line, let's draw that in so we can see it a bit clearer. So we've got the grain line there is that if we place the ruler at 90 degrees onto the grain line and we match it where the rise finishes there and rule across oops this is often referred to as the seat the seat line and that is true of the front as well. So if we put that onto our green line, green for green line, and then square. And that becomes the front seat line. The word seat is just a polite word as opposed to crutch or um, bum. If we put these together it looks like they match but normally, normally there is actually a difference of about a centimetre between them so they don't always run adjacent across from each other. The first thing to do is to copy around around these and you might want to put a little hole where your dart is and draw in the notches. So we're going to start with the front. So 
So I've got the grain line in. I have also added in the seat line. We can abbreviate that to SL. So there's two things, there's the fly and then there's a slatted pocket. And I've drawn some of these lines in already as a guide, but I will use colour to draw them in. Now the first thing to think about is your hand and how wide it is for putting into the pocket. Yep. So me, 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 me. You need to think about how wide the hand spread roughly is and it's the kind of maximum measurement we're looking at here is about 16 in real life so in real life the pocket mouth equals about 16 centimeters so that is the pocket mouth there When we look at this, the slanted pocket is not coming from the side, it's coming a couple of centimetres in. Um, and this is where we have to remember that we're working in quarter scale. So this measurement here is about 1.5 centimetres. And of course, in real life, in real life, we can go outside, it would be about three centimetres max. There are other styles as well. Of course, there are things such as curved pockets on jeans. So with that in mind, this point down to the side seam is going to be about... 16 centimeters in real life. So we're looking at about seven, eight centimeters here till we reach the side seam. So that's eight cm. Now we need to decide how big the pocket is gonna be. We need to think about what we're gonna put in there, but also let's not go and put the pocket peg finishing down here because you'll never be able to retrieve the items. This is where we join into the side seam and there is going to be two layers of pocketing and we have to think that there's the back seam as well. So we've got the top of the trouser, the front, we've got two layers of fabric for the pocket and we've got the back. So this section here which is approximately one centimetre, maybe two to three centimetres in real life, is just joining onto the side seam for strength. On more informal clothes like denim, they will bring the pocket bag all the way down on the side seam, but this causes a lot of bulk. So what we're going to do just about here is come in about, about a centimetre in real life, half a centimetre approximately. Um, you can make it a bit more. And then we're going to square down. So at the moment we have achieved our first right angle of the day. Hey. How low you bring this, how low you bring the pocket down, it depends on on, on your personal choice but like I said if it's going anywhere below the seat line you're not going to be able to retrieve the items if you're sat down or even if you're stood up if you're stood up you'll look like you're crouching down to have a shit in the woods I would imagine I'm only doing one take of these things so if I say anything inappropriate I'm not actually going to edit it out
So I'm coming down. Four centimeters. In scale, in non-scale, if you know what I mean. Then we need to decide how deep the pocket is. Or how wide the pocket is. And that's where we have to kind of leave that for a second and remember that we have the fly on the front. Because what we don't want to do is have a pocket peg that comes along there and goes into the fly. Otherwise, you will have loads of layers of fabric, but also you won't be able to use that part of the pocket. So you can see that I've got my guidelines already here and it finishes before. But let's go back and look at this area here first. So we've got the centre front there. And the original centre front on the block is coming up here, which is very much straight and at 90 degrees from that line there. And it's quite common to have to measure in Point five one centimeter in real life in there to give a bit more fitting if you're fitting on the waist if you were doing a high-waisted trouser you would carry on up but normally we move the center front line in at point five one centimeter in real life So that means from where the knot is there, we're going to redraw in our centre front so it's at an angle. Like that. So that's the new centre front. So between this point, the new centre front point, and where this dashed line is, this is going to represent where the fly is. And Flies in real life. Flies in real life are between 3.5 to 4.5 centimetres. Normally on a tailor pair of trousers that'll be about three and on denim we're looking at four, 4.5. But also zip flies tend to be narrower than button flies. So if you have a button fly, you tend to make the fly wider so you can put your hands in and do the buttons up. So this measurement here, between here and here, represents approximately 3.5. And then down here, we have the crutch notch. And approximately 0.5, one centimetre in real life, we are going to measure up and come across. And we'll look at that in more detail later. So this needs to be 90 degrees for now. And then we will come out the same measurement as here. Oops. Again, this is going to be 90 degrees. So at the moment that's our fly. We could jump right in and we could give the classic fly shape that we all know and love. 
to get to this point, we would have to think about 1.5 centimeters, which is three centimeters in real life, approximately. So that gives us our fly shape. You don't have to do a curve, but trousers without a curved fly look really weird when they're sewn, and we're also used to it. So that leaves us now at the stage where we've got our fly, we've reshaped in there, and we've got the beginning of our pocket. So the next thing is to complete the basic pocket peg shape. So with that in mind, we can measure about point 0.5 away and then we can draw along the rest of the top of the bag like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to square this off. So 90 degrees. Ninety degrees. So it just means that when we come across here and we come down here they intersect they cross each other's path 90 degrees if you want some rough measurements this is approximately 11 and a half and that measurement is approximately, I don't know, nine. Nine. Okay. So we've got our pocket opening and going in, and we've got the basic pocket bag shape. This is the basic shape, but we need to do quite a few little things to make it work better. If you look in your trouser pockets, you will find out that you have, not only do you have the pocket bag fabric, which is normally made of a cotton material, but you will have two pieces of fabric here, which are the same as the rest of the leg, the self pieces. So what we need is two pocket bags, two facings. But we also need to think about how we make this pattern less angular and stronger, because if we're putting coins, phones, keys into these pocket bags, these corners aren't strong enough, but also actually getting a machinist to sit there and sew corners like that is harder, but also we cannot do things like French seam or bind corners. So we're gonna curve these. And we're gonna use the same kind of rough method as this. And I'm gonna just wing this a bit. So we're thinking with these two points roughly three centimeters like that and we can curve it in and actually as you become more experienced you don't need so much, so many guides you just get used to curving things off so that's that and we will do the same here and we'll just gently curve that so we've got a curve now we can see that the fly is coming this way and at the moment, our pocket bag is still remaining true to the original centre front and the grain line. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to step this back to match. So we're going to come back a further half a centimetre. Okay. So that makes up the basic shape now. And now we need to think about facings and copying the pattern pieces off. 